the Grinch Stole Christmas is a popular Christmas favorite, and there's a good chance children might find a tape of it under their Christmas tree this year. It's now one of the most popular videotapes. More and more people are beginning to buy tapes like this one to watch movies at home. As a result, sales of the machines used to play these tapes are skyrocketing. Absolutely fantastic. We're selling uh, quite a few a week more than last year. I'd, I'd say at least five or five or six times more than last year. As a result of competition, VCR prices are going down. For an example, models that sold for as much as $325 last year, you can buy for about $220 this year. Even a Grinch would be pleased. Uh, our prices are like $150 less than what they were last year. If you want a VCR this Christmas, you'd better hurry. Boyd says supplies are becoming limited at his store and also at others in the area. Jackson Cherry, New Center 6. Remember two years ago when you had trouble with your phone? You'd simply call your local phone company and they would take care of any problem. Well, if you've called your phone company lately, you've probably noticed that's not the way it works anymore. You have to call one company for one phony need or problem and call a different company for a different problem. Well, if it sounds confusing to you, you're not the only one. The number one problem that they faced has been confusion. Uh, not knowing who to call for what type of repair or for service. Prior to divestiture, a customer could call the telephone company for one-stop shopping. A federal court order which took effect in 1984 broke up the huge AT&T company into seven smaller regional companies. AT&T was allowed to keep its long-distance service but gave the seven smaller companies the right to provide local service. That's meant higher local rates for most places in the country. But officials here say that's not the case in Wilmington. Fortunately, local rates have not increased since the vestiture. Only increase that the customer has experienced was a $1 access charge that was put on last June to help make up for the lost revenue that occurred when the local companies lost the long distance from the AT&T. Officials at Southern Bell point out that Ma Bell's baby is still just a toddler. They say they hope as their company grows older, some of its growing pains will disappear. Jackson Cherry, News Center 6. Wilmington native Cheryl Gerganis was honored today at the White House. As we reported earlier, Cheryl won a national magazine contest designed to honor kids who care about other people. Out of 70,000 entries, Cheryl was one of five winners nationwide. What makes Cheryl's story even more special is that she suffers from cerebral palsy. News Center 6 reporter Jackson Cherry is in Washington covering this story and filed this report via satellite just moments ago. One over here has... When the official White House Christmas tree arrived at the White House this morning, seven-year-old Cheryl Gorganis was there to help Mrs. Reagan accept the tree. Cheryl says she enjoyed meeting Mrs. Reagan. I like her. I think she's good and nice. After leaving the White House, Cheryl and the other winners were honored at a luncheon by the contest sponsors, which were the Care Bear Company and Woman's Day Magazine. America's big hero, Senator John Glenn of Ohio, was on hand to honor America's little hero. And actress Mariette Hartley was there to present the award. Cheryl won her award because despite her handicap, she helps take care of the more severely handicapped kids in her class at school. For being a helpful and caring friend of Anisha and all of her classmates, seven-year-old Cheryl, Cheryl Gerganius of Wilmington, North Carolina. of Cheryl's trip will be very busy, complete with private tours of the White House and the Capitol, plus a special guest appearance on Good Morning America. Organizers of the trip say this is a way of giving a little back to kids who give so much of themselves. Jackson Cherry, New Center 6, Washington. Okay. New Hanover County is going to get...
Christmas is a time when many people take time out of their busy schedules to think about others. The vigil for world peace was a chance for more than 50 people to realize that Christmas won't be a time of happiness for many of the world's children, like those who live in Nicaragua. There are many children dying there, many families dying there, and it's especially heavy on our minds because we know that we're connected to it. Um, we know that the guns there and the, and the bullets to kill those children are being funded by us, by our government. Eisen said vigils like this one can make a difference. People we talked to agreed. Because it helps to raise the level of awareness in the people, I mean the people who are here, right, and they go out and they tell other people. As a pacifist myself, you know, I've told a lot of people about it. Sometimes they don't want to listen, but I think vigils like this are great to get the word out. The vigil was sponsored by the campus radio station, WLOZ. The speakers say Christmas is the only time of the year when many people take time out to think about world peace. They say unless we start thinking about it year-round, we may not have many more holidays to celebrate. Jackson Cherry, News Center 6. Three years ago, American textile companies supplied the U.S. with 65% of all of its textile products. Today, they supply it with only about 50%. Those companies are losing ground to foreign companies who can manufacture their goods cheaper. The, uh, we are, we're finding we're often competing with one hand tied behind our back, and oftentimes our government seems to be more on the side of our competitors than they seem to be on our side. And uh, what we're trying to do now is to get legislation uh, through Congress, has passed Congress and now on the President's desk, that would give us a, a level playing field. The legislation will call for tough import restrictions on foreign countries. If it isn't passed, many people in North Carolina could lose their jobs. I think that uh, many small towns throughout the state, of course, either have a textile or a power plant. And if one of these is forced to close or has lay layoffs because of imports, then this certainly affects the economy of those towns. Uh, uh, many times there are not other jobs in the area. imports, then I think this has a, uh, an effect throughout the community. The residents of this home on Azalea Drive are the latest victims in a string of 17 burglaries in the South Oleander area. Police believe the crimes are related because they all happened around the same time at night and in the same neighborhood. Three of the burglaries happened when people were asleep inside the houses. Because of this, police consider the burglar dangerous. I would consider them dangerous. They're brazen enough to go into homes while people are asleep, um, to move articles around um, while the homes are occupied. Yes, I would consider them dangerous. Police say there are steps you can take to protect your home and your neighbors. Uh, I would caution the people to, uh, first of all, look out for their neighbor as much as they can. They can uh, deadbolt lock their windows and doors. Uh, they, some people are even installing alarm systems. Detective Newber says he feels they are close to solving the case. We have developed suspects. We even have uh, some suspects vehicles that we're watching very closely. Uh, at this moment, uh, we haven't picked up and questioned any suspects at this time. We expect to very soon. In the meantime, police say to make sure you keep your doors and windows locked and watch out for your neighbor's home as well as your own. Jackson Cherry, News Center 6. Welcome aboard the Sea Fever. We're going to show you what it's like to be a member of the Wrightsville Beach Holiday Flotilla. Come on aboard. While you're getting your sea legs, I'll introduce you to the captain, Oscar Grant. You're in good hands with Oscar. He's been sailing since he was a boy. Oh, I think it's just uh, part of the good Christmas spirit to be a part of uh, something like this. And uh, everybody takes part, uh, really has a great time. And I think it, uh, this crew on this boat is a good example of the way people really pitch in and become a part of it. Until it is time to, be, to leave the dock. It's time to get started. 
The flotilla is like a Christmas parade, but instead of marching bands and horses, boats like the Sea Fever string Christmas lights from bow to stern. From aboard the Sea Fever, we can see the first of the boats come by. It's Santa and Mrs. Claus. And behind them comes a bunch of singing snowmen. And look, there's a star, and a Christmas tree, and of course the waving crowd. Being a member of the crew of the Sea Fever, one thing you can see right away, a lot of fun is being had aboard all the boats. And now a special message from the crew of the Sea Fever. Merry, Merry Christmas! Christmas! <laughs> we don't have a stern line. Okay, put a line on it. Somebody put a line on it. Laid right in What's here. What's that good piling? And now a special message from the crew of the Sea Fever. Merry, Merry Christmas! Christmas! If your house is burglarized and you don't have the right insurance coverage, you can stand to lose a lot of money. Most people suffer their biggest losses when their jewelry is taken. They're not aware that their basic homeowner's insurance will only pay $500 for all jewelry taken, no matter how valuable it is. 95% of all North Carolinians are covered under the $500 plan. The limitation in North Carolina is $500 which can be endorsed up to a thousand, but most people just have the general five hundred dollars on their homeowner's policy. And that's five hundred for all your jewelry and all your furs. Bullard said you should cover your jewelry and other valuables under a separate policy. He says it won't cost you a lot. Well if they have any sort of valuable jewelry or furs, they need to have them appraised and have them insured separately as an endorsement on their homeowners or to write a separate complete policy for it. That gives them broader coverage. It's not that much more expensive and there's no question about what it's insured for that way. Bullard said it's important for you to reevaluate your homeowner's policy every two years. You should reevaluate your, evaluate your homeowner's every couple of years anyway. Contact your agent and ask him if you need to add a replacement calls for contents on your homeowner's or getting guaranteed replacement costs on your dwelling. Your jewelry is important, but also the rest of your items in your house are important, as well as the correct amount of coverage on your house. Bullard says buying insurance is something that a lot of people put off, but he says a little extra coverage now can save you a lot of money in the future. Jackson Cherry, News Center 6. Before a standing room only crowd, Council Member Catherine Hoyt started the ball rolling by recommending that Council open Gillette Drive. She says if it remains closed, it could pose a problem for emergency vehicles. Aside from the traffic problems is the fact that the city cannot deliver emergency services within our state time frame. And I think this is of great concern that we cannot do this. Tony Pate seconded her motion, but Irving Fogler made a substitute motion. His motion would prohibit council from making any decision on streets like Gillette Drive until the city's planning commissions could study the issue. I think that since we have a planning commission and we have a subdivision review board and we have a well-qualified staff, I believe that it would be uh, most appropriate for either the planning commission or the subdivision review board to, to review these things and make recommendations to us. Through Mayor Barry Williams and council members Don Betts, Irving Fogler, and Bob Shipp supported the resolution. Council members Catherine Hoyt, Luther Jordan, and Tony Pate voted against it. So the resolution uh, passed four to three. Those in favor of the motion for adoption will say aye. aye. Sometimes it takes a little extra attention for children to reach their full potential and feel good about themselves. 
These children are getting the extra help they need from members of the Alpha Kappa Alpha sorority. Each day after school, these children come here and they study and they learn about themselves and each other. We always stress good manners. We always stress good attitudes. We always stress being able to love people regardless. Of the 24 kids in this program are from New Hanover County Schools. They were recommended by their guidance counselors. Most of the kids have seen an improvement in their grades since they started getting the extra help. I do good in school and do good in my work. I could do good grades in my own in school and say thank you and please and make friends. But this afternoon they didn't study. Instead it was a time to sing. time to open presents yeah, you got oh. and it was also a time to be thankful that they had special friends to give them a hand Jackson Cherry News Center 6 Around 8 o'clock tonight, a man armed with a gun attempted to rob this area zip mart. But much to his surprise, the store clerk pulled a knife on him, and the would-be robber ran out of the store. I noticed a uh, subject walking down beside the front of the building, and uh, I noticed that he wearing a, either a ski mask or a stocking, and that's when I got up and walked towards him. He was walking in the door. I walked towards him and had the knife in my hand. At uh, that time, he opened the door, looked at me, and turned around and ran behind the building. Wilmington police were on the scene within minutes to investigate. Officer Mark Reed says this is an unusual case. It's the first time I've ever heard something like this happening as far as um, the person seeing the knife. It's uh, not a very smart thing to do, but you know, somebody could have gotten hurt, but nobody did. Coburn says he acted on impulse, and he's not sure what he'd do if he was faced with the situation again. The knife against the gun is really crazy. It happened so fast, you really don't have time to think about it until after it's all over with. And I never thought about it either way. I... Police used dogs to search the area, but didn't find any evidence. They say the suspect is a small-built black male about five feet tall wearing dark clothing. Jackson Cherry, New Center 6. This looks like a normal Christmas tree, but it's not. It can make a brighter Christmas for some needy kids in the area. It's called the Angel Tree, and it's sponsored by the Salvation Army. Here's how it works. The Salvation Army got the names of over 2,000 needy kids in the area. They made angel ornaments with each of those kids' names and hung them on the tree. Now area folks come by and choose one of the ornaments and buy that child a gift. Oh, I love it. It makes it, it's, it is great just to see the people coming by to, ask, to answer their questions and to help them out with finding the kids on the tree. And it's just real heartwarming to have the people come in. The response has been overwhelming this year because of people like Sylvie Robinson. She got gifts for several of the kids. She says it makes her feel good to share. It makes you aware that while we spend a great, great deal on ourselves and our children, there are others that we can share with, others who really need our help. Some parents say they are teaching their kids about sharing by letting them choose a gift. Six-year-old Jessica just picked a gift for a child her own age. Because the people, because she didn't have any toys. You think it's nice to buy it for kids who have no toys? Yes. Why do you think so? Because it would be, because they don't have any toys and, and then they could play with the Salvation Army will start distributing these gifts on Monday. They say if each kid who gets a gift smiles, all of our Christmases will be brightened by the glow. Jackson Cherry, News Center 6.
Local law enforcement officers say driving while under the influence of drugs is a big problem on our area highways. It does not say driving under the influence of alcohol anymore. It says driving while impaired of an impairing substance. And that covers a wide range of anything, you know, from NyQuil on down. You see a lot of it? I see quite a bit of it. Officers say they arrest a lot of drivers under the influence of drugs like marijuana and other narcotics. But many of their arrests are in people who are taking prescription or over-the-counter drugs. Doctors say their effects can be as impairing as some narcotics. There are some guidelines you can follow to keep yourself safe as well as others. Ask your pharmacist if it's safe to drive after taking an over-counter drug. Then follow his advice. Read the label for a warning describing how it will affect you. And then ask what the effects will be if you consume alcohol while taking the medication. Davis says because there is no standardized test for drug content, it's usually hard to get a conviction in court. He says, however, just getting them off the road is satisfaction enough for him. Sometimes, but once I get them off the street, I feel I've saved at least one life, and that's the driver's life. Davis said you should value your life enough to use good common sense. He says you should be honest with yourself and to remember it's no crime to call a cab. Jackson Cherry, News Center 6. The pro-life group arrived about 7.30 to protest abortions performed at Dr. Crisp OBGYN clinic. But they weren't the only ones protesting. The people that live in the doctor's neighborhood are upset that the pro-life group held their vigil near their homes. Well, they can protest, but protest okay. up in his office, you not at his home. They want him in the neighborhood. No, I wouldn't want to go to that neighborhood and do this. It's not right. A spokesman for the pro-life group responded by comparing the vigil to an abortion. As to the disruption of the sanctity of the womb on the unborn child by uh, an abortionist, there is a disruption there as well. And I think ours is, we have tried to keep it at a minimum. Our purpose here is not to, uh, to disrupt. I notice there are a lot of onlookers. Uh, we are just simply here to pray. The vigil lasted about an hour. Police were on hand in case it got out of hand, but the protest was peaceful. A spokesman for the pro-life group says they will continue to hold vigils like this one at Dr. Chris home as long as he performs abortions. The neighbors say they'll try to seek some legal action to keep them away. Jackson Cherry, News Center 6. A little entertainment to soothe the spirit of the savage, frantic, last-minute shopper. So many gifts to buy in so little time. What are you guys shopping for? Mom, dad, sister, <laughs> everybody really. As crazy and hectic as it may seem, it's a Christmas tradition for some folks. Every year just about the same old thing, come out here at the last minute. Some shoppers say it's a social experience. Everybody's out shopping and the weather's a little nippy and it's just nice. You run into old friends. That you have. I've just ran into somebody I haven't seen in 10 years. While others describe it as almost a religious experience. Oh, I always wait till the last day. I don't get inspiration until about Christmas Eve. Most folks we talk to say last minute shopping is as much a part of their Christmas as Santa Claus and eggnog. But what about the people who have to work? Crazy. It really is. You get a lot of people, you know, that are out just for uh, the last minute shopping and they really just. Wow. Well, if you're a last-minute shopper this year and you don't enjoy it, remember, New Year's is right around the corner. A perfect time to resolve to shop early next year. Jackson Cherry, News Center 6. About a dozen people will spend Christmas here at the Salvation Army Shelter. 
They don't have homes or any place to go, and this place is warm. For people like Doc, it seems an only hope. Doc is an ex-con from Amarillo, Texas. He spent five years in prison for selling stolen army weapons. He says bad luck brought him to Wilmington. I was hitchhiking up to go catch I-40 across going west. I stopped at a service station and my backpack and the money I had in it when I come out was gone. And that left me down and out. So I was hitchhiking, just still trying to get there before Christmas. And the guy picked me up, brought me here. And Tomorrow, Doc and the other people who stay here will have an old-fashioned Christmas dinner, complete with turkeys and cranberry sauce. Doc says it's a nice gesture, but he sure would love to be eating at his mother's table. I made a few friends here. It's not, it won't be like Christmas back home, where everybody comes around. It's going to be a lot different, and it's going to be harder on me. The people here say they're thankful that they have some place to go, but they also say they're very hopeful that by next Christmas, many of their lives will have changed, and that they will be able to spend Christmas at a home of their own. Jackson Cherry, News Center 6. Sales of coal are up 150% today at Rose Coal and Ice Company. They say it's been their best sales day since last winter. Of course, with the cold weather, they're up, just like the warm, you know, helps our ice sales. It seemed the only way to stay warm out of doors today was to bundle up. Sales were also up for warm winter clothing, like gloves, hats, and long underwear. And they've been up quite a bit since like a couple weeks ago when the weather was warm. For people who had to work out of doors, the wind chill factor of near zero made the hours pass very slowly. Officer Blanton usually walks his downtown beat, but today he drove. It was cold, <laughs> and they uh, let me have one today and said to park it and walk. And I can get in every once in a while and get warm. <laughs> if you have to work out of doors, Officer Blanton has some advice. Bundle up. Just, you know, uh, try to stay as warm as you can. Stay. But some relief from the cold weather should come tomorrow. Meteorologist Dan Parker predicts temperatures in the 50s. Jackson Cherry, News Center 6. Traditionally, New Year's Eve is a time for parties. And just as traditionally, every year after these parties, a lot of people drink and drive. But some area bars and lounges are offering an alternative. They're selling New Year's Eve packages. The deals, of course, include a party complete with champagne and noisy party favors. Plus, they offer rooms at reduced rates so you won't have to drive home. We're going to have bands in our Gabriel's Lounge. We're going to have a band in the ballroom. We have excellent meals planned in the ballroom. We're going to have dancing in the ballroom. Uh, plenty of good food, plenty of drinks, and then we do have overnight accommodations. Bar managers say the response this year has been overwhelming. Although no one we talked to has sold out yet, many places only have a few tickets left. Adams is a place to be. That's, we'll, we'll be just as full as we are every year. And then, of course, we have our uh, $25 room package uh, along with that. Any guest can pay $25 for as many people as they want to put in the room. It's not per person. It's $25. We don't want them out on the roads drinking and driving. Each year, New Year's Eve packages become more and more popular. Folks say it's a good alternative. After all, a DWI is not a very good way to start a new year. Jackson Cherry, New Center 6. Twenty-seven FM. This is Dennis Lee and Michael Jordan on our Homeless Radio Marathon. Ain't that right, Mike? Yeah, we're in hour twenty-one right now, people. We're going to do a total of one hundred and twenty. We're doing it up. These two disc Tuesday, jockeys, Michael and Jordan and Dennis is, Lee of WHSL Radio, have been on the air since yesterday at six p.m. They're holding a one hundred and twenty-hour radio marathon for the area's homeless. So far, they say they've had a great response. 
Oh, the response has been tremendous. I mean, when you talk about doing this at 4 o'clock in the morning and your phones are always off the hook and you've just got so many people calling up and wondering when they can come in and put pledges, uh, that, that tells you right there how the people feel about it. As the population of the area has grown, so has the number of people without homes. Statistics are startling if you would go back Savage Army statistics and see the number of people we served in this program in 1981 compared to 1985. It'll blow your mind. A New Hanover County Human Relations Survey this year shows more than 200 homeless people in Wilmington. Brogdon says single males still make up most of the area's homeless, but the biggest increase is in the number of homeless women and children. In 1984, 301 women and children stayed at the Salvation Army Shelter. In 1985, 737 have stayed there. Brogdon says with numbers like these, you can't ignore the homeless. You have to help them. Jackson Cherry, News Center 6. Um, I was at the intersection of Market and 17th Street. It was pretty late at night, and I was hit by a drunk driver. He ran a red light, the you know the lights that flash at night, and um, he ran that light and he hit the passenger side of the car, which is where I was. Donna suffered severe head injuries, and she missed a lot of school. I really don't remember the whole accident. I have kind of like a memory block, and so I don't remember it. But I was in the hospital for kind of for a pretty long time. And Donna's mom says the experience was tough on the whole family. She says she doesn't think the penalties are tough enough for drunk drivers. I mean, it could be, say, your child that's injured or killed as well as someone else's, and it's too much of a risk to you think take. should be tougher? I think it should be a lot tougher. Um, when we monitor some of the drunk driving cases uh, in town, some of the punishments are pretty fair, but a lot of them we feel like they should have much stiffer sentencing and we feel like that they should be more persistent. New Year's Eve, there'll be a lot of parties and a lot of people drinking and driving. The Riceville Beach Police have a reputation of being particularly tough on drunk drivers. Chief George Antley says there will be extra officers patrolling. We'll have uh, about twice the normal amount of people outside on New Year's Eve uh, looking especially for drunk drivers. So tomorrow night, remember, there will be extra patrols, and if you are caught for drunk driving, the penalties will be tough. Jackson Cherry, News Center 6. Where to, please? Market Street. Tonight, area cab drivers will be asking that question a lot. New Year's Eve is their busiest night of the year. Cab drivers say North Carolina's tough DWI laws make a lot of people think twice about driving after drinking, and that means good news for their pocketbooks. A lot of people are realizing that how dangerous it is to get on the road and uh, how expensive it can be with the DWI. So it helps us out a whole lot, yes. Strickland says he doesn't mind working New Year's Eve. He says most folks are in the holiday spirit. It's a lot of fun. People are real nice during this time of the year. They still have the Christmas spirit, I think. And they're friendly. Everyone is friendly, and they tip a lot. But that's what I like. Six dollars, please. Thank you. Happy New Year. So tonight, remember, a cab is only a phone call away. A DWI sure wouldn't be a good way to ring in the new year. Jackson Cherry, New Center 6. And parties to ring in the new year are being held all over the area tonight. Nightside reporter Jackson Cherry is lucky enough to be at one of those parties. Can you tell she's working really hard? Jackson, how are you, baby? I'm doing great, Mike. Sure do wish you and friends were here. I'm having a great time. In fact, everybody.
crowd. He's having a great time here. The band is playing and people are dancing and champagne corks are going off all around us. I would take, like to take a quick minute to remind everybody, if you are drinking tonight, please don't drive. I talked with a highway patrolman earlier today and they said um, more than twice the number of patrols are going to be out tonight. So please be careful if you're out there. If you're out there, call a cab or call a friend or maybe call a hotel room or something. They're going to be a little cheaper tonight. Um, Mike and Francis, as you know, uh, New Year's is a time for resolutions, and if you guys are like me, there's no need to make them because you break them as soon as you're there. But I do have a guy here who's going to tell us a little bit about his New Year's resolution. Right. Michael Jordan. I am going to quit smoking. That's all there is to it. And, of course, wine, woman, and song. <laughs> Learn a new way to cook beans so I can eat at night. <laughs> okay, now a special message from us of Gabriel. Happy New Year. <laughs> Happy New Year to you, Francis. Yeah. Francis Jackson, Francis. Hey, Mike, uh, good job on not smoking for the next year. Those are peaceful plants. If you were watching television at 1 o'clock this afternoon, you saw something you'd never seen before. A New Year's Day greeting from the top man at the Kremlin, Soviet leader Mikhail Gorbachev. At the same time, the people of the Soviet Union heard greetings from President Reagan. The speeches met with mixed reactions from area folks. I think the you know, more exchanges that we can have between our countries, I think the much, much better that's going to be between the heads of the government, between the peoples of the country. And I think we have to understand them, and I think they have to understand us. I'm really not interested in what the Russians think because there's so much dishonesty that you really can't trust them. The Most folks said 1985 was a year of mixed blessings. Of yeah, so many bad things, all this terrorist and thing, you know, that worries me a lot. I'm I guess it was a good year in, in one, one sense, but in another sense, it, there was just so much turmoil. And they hope some things will change in 1986. I like to see more people wanting to work and make their own living. I'd like to see education get much, much better than what it is. Like Farmers are in desperate need of some assistance from somewhere, from federal government or something. Otherwise, the country would be starving. World peace concerns me. Peace on earth. Peace. In their speeches, both Reagan and Gorbachev strongly talked about their desire for world peace, and so did the people that we talked to. They say if in 1986 we can all take steps to ensure peace, it may be the best year ever. Jackson Cherry, New Center 6. What's up? It's kind of hard to be lonely if you're a disc jockey at WBMS Radio. People are always walking by and waving, and folks in cars slow down just to say hello. Daryl Morrow works a 6 p.m. to midnight shift. It's like being your own, in your own little show or something. You, know, you, you never know who's going to pass by, and uh, whoever does pass by, they usually wave at you. Now and again, they stop in, say hello. Like most disc jockeys, Daryl spends much of the night choosing and spinning records. He also has fun taking requests. I'm going to send this out to super listener Louise. She said she'll bring me a hamburger fries and a large iced tea if I throw this on for her. So here you are. Daryl says many of the same people walk by night after night. But he says every once in a while, some unusual folks drop by for a visit. I could write a book on it. Uh, one night. A group of kids, they were dressed up like punk rockers, stopped in and uh, said hello and wanted to have a little party here of their own. And you, know, you run across different things every now and again. Uh, you might see some joggers pass by, uh, lovers on their way down to the little river there. Daryl says his special window makes him feel like more than a disc jockey. It makes him feel like part of his community. And he says from where he's sitting, the folks on Princess Street sure are looking good. Jackson Cherry, News Center 6. They started fighting the fire shortly after noon, but by that time it was too late. Wilmington firefighters say there was smoke coming out of the roof when they got there. Well, when we arrived on the scene, we had smoke showing from the upper top of the building. 
uh, we immediately advanced a line inside to a, what appeared to be a heater in a closet, and it was burning very rapidly. In They're not saying for sure yet that the heating system caused it, but there's a suspicion of it. Some buildings have firewalls, but this one does not, and that's a problem. Uh, our initial attack uh, was, was checking it for a short period of time, but apparently the firewalls in the attic uh, uh, were not holding the fire, and it extended to both ends of the building. Lucy Bowman used to live here until an hour or so ago. Firemen rescued a picture of her husband and children. That was important to her. I'm just thankful that I... <laughs> have enough good business sense to have insurance on my belongings, although some things are not replaceable. The call came late, the fire advanced rapidly, and the lack of firewalls combined to make saving the building almost impossible. It was last year that they were here for a fire in January. That one was difficult because the hydrants were frozen. This year, temperatures in the 60s kept that from being a factor. But there are several more buildings here without firewalls, and that's a cause for continuing concern. Jackson Cherry, News Center 6. Commission member Jack Dolan says it will cost you more than first expected is that it will be somewhere between five and seven cents per hundred. Uh, originally, there was some talk about it being a cent and a half or two cents, but that was based upon what uh, funding we gave to the volunteer fire departments in the past. For example, if you own property worth $70,000 and if the tax is five cents per hundred dollars, you'll pay $35 a year for fire protection. Reaction was mixed among area firefighters. Some thought it was a big mistake because it would increase the county's liability. Drive down the road, fire truck gets stuck, he's paying taxes, uh, he's going to be looking for the taxpayers to buy him a house. And that's going to require a tremendous amount of money to overcome. And you will not do it on the two cents that's been talked about. It's going to go to five to seven and probably well exceed that. While others say many of the county's residents have been getting a free ride, and tax districts will make the cost of fire protection fair for everyone. It will be more equitable in some ways because nationally only 12% of the people donate to volunteer fire departments. So this means that 88% of the people were riding somewhat free. This is cocaine. An area undercover agents say you can buy this and other illegal drugs almost anywhere in the area. Although most of us aren't aware of it, drug deals are made in most of our very own neighborhoods. Officers say in 1985, the trafficking of drugs was the most common problem they faced. Drug traffic around here in 1985 is, uh, we've seen an increase in the uh, amount of cocaine uh, that's available in this area. Uh, there's still drugs such as LSD that are available in this area that are on a decline in other areas, but for some reason it's, uh, they're sticking around here. Steve said there are so many small-time drug peddlers in the area that law enforcement agencies simply don't have the manpower to bust them all. What you just saw was a drug deal. Steve says he usually compiles information he gets from operations like this one until he has enough to arrest not only the drug peddler, but his supplier as well. He says area vice officers are increasing the number of these sting operations. But he also says most drug dealers are willing to take the risk because drug dealing is big business. Just millions upon millions of dollars, even in, in this area, which is the, I guess, the second smallest county in the state. But Steve says as long as there is so much money involved in drug dealing, our area will continue to be plagued with the problem. He says, however, area vice officers will continue to crack down, especially in their attempt to keep drugs out of the schools and out of the hands of area young people. Jackson Cherry, News Center 6.